Welcome to Cinderella Has Cellulite, a show about love, romance, and how to make it all last. Relationship expert Donna R. Weitzman draws on her years of experience in and out of the dating game to unwrap the mysteries behind the all-too-familiar fairy tale. Tune in to find out the secrets behind first dates, second marriages, and everything in between. From his friends and her friends to X's and O's, this is Cinderella Has Cellulite. And now, your host, Donna Arp Weitzman. Hello, Zach. Hello, Donna. It's a good afternoon it out is, there. It is a great afternoon. It's a little cloudy, but uh, we're having a good time regardless, I think. How are you? I'm good. Our audience doesn't know that you and I sit right by the Dallas Tollway. We do. Yes, and yes. I can see lovers driving down the Dallas Tollway as yes. I speak. I see them. Believe it or not, they are out in droves in the middle of the day. They on a, are. <laughs> on it's, it's a little afternoon, and I think there's some love going on out there with luncheons and all that kind of thing. I would hope so. Donna, that reminds me. When was the last time you brunched? When was the last time you went to brunch? You know what? I actually brunched this last week. Really? Like yesterday. Where'd you go? I went to a Mexican food place that was fabulous called Bendito's. Do you guys know Bendito's? Bendito's. No, I'm not going to plug them, but I am going to plug them because I'm still coming off of the high of drinking sugar-free <laughs> margaritas. <laughs> sugar-free margaritas. That is incredible. You know, brunch in Dallas is supposed to be a big thing. Yeah, it is. I, mm-hmm. I was thinking about that the other day. I can't remember the last time I brunched. I've been missing out. But you know brunch what? Brunch is an event. I think that brunch is an event for millennials. And you since think? you're the resident millennial, Zach Lewis is my sidekick for those <laughs> au- for the audience that knows. <laughs> Thank you, viewers. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, Donna. And do you brunch with your girlfriend? Uh, every once in a while. Typically, our brunch will be we woke up late on a Saturday, so we're just going to eat later. Um, but every once in a while, yeah, we'll go out and brunch. Here's what it is. My sister, who I love to death, a couple years older than me, she's the greatest, she um, works kind of a side gig at a cafe over in Highland Village. I think. Okay. And yeah, it's the greatest little place called Seven Mile Cafe. You should go check it out. Yummy. Great food. Um, she kind of tends bar over there and works as management in some position. So yeah, we'll go over there and usually she'll slide us a free cinnamon roll or something. It's a good time. <laughs> yeah, a <laughs> well, family reunion. Now, for, for baby boomers my age, we think of brunch being on Sunday morning. Kind of a lot of times for me in the 70s, and I did wear my 70s jacket for those mul- You did. Your outfit Facebook is outstanding live. today, Thank Donna. You. I know I say that every day, but this really, you're This is a it. vintage piece from the 70s. It's hard to believe, but I've kept it all these years. And we always brunched on Sunday because we usually had a hangover and we needed Bloody Marys. <laughs> I figured now, it because be it's after church. But yeah, okay, hangover, uh, well, that's a good answer. you can go to church with a hangover, sure. but then you still have to have some Bloody Mary or some kind of vitamin C. Is that why millennials uh, brunch? you got to have a reason to pray. Maybe that's it. We, we might get scurvy if we don't eat enough, <laughs> <laughs> eat enough vitamin C. It did help. It did help. Well, you know, we are talking a lot about uh, millennials and baby boomers today, and I have two other millennials and we've been discussing their ages but i think they're 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 in the millennial uh, genre and yes. uh, generation a little millennial competition in the studio and today. one thing that's been being brought up zach a lot to me recently on my radio tours is talking about why people get married now right why do people mm-hmm. get married you know some of the statistics i do it's an older tradition i can understand kind of understand. Oh, Zach's making me feel old. No. Audience. Yes, he is. I mean old in the mm-hmm. sense of like thousands of years old mm-hmm. kind of tradition. Well, it's not, you know, well, not necessarily you, old hat. The reason we're doing today and the title of our uh, episode is, Is Marriage Outdated? Is Marriage Outdated? Yeah. So listen up, listeners and, uh, and viewers. We're going to talk to three different people, including Zach, on why people in their 20s and early 30s are not getting married as quickly as those of us who are over 35. You know, i got to be honest, the, the opinion I think I'm most interested to hear in this is yours, Donna R. Weissman, because you're very very retrograde kind of thinker uh, uh, regarding a lot of things in relationships. I'm curious to see how you feel about okay. this. But I don't want to cut you off. Uh, marriage okay. is, is, is marriage outdated? Is That's marriage outdated? Well, let me give a few facts. One of the facts is, uh, according to recent studies, and there have been several, so I'm not going to cite any one study, but there have been several talking about the lack of marriage and that about 25% is what they're 
they're saying and they're projecting of baby bo- uh, I'm sorry of millennials will never marry really 25 25 percent so that's one in four that of seems... all baby boomers well I mean I keep saying baby boomers because I am one uh, but all millennials will never marry at all right I would say that seems hard to believe but due to my previous circumstances regarding relationships maybe that's not so crazy <laughs> <laughs> 25 percent one in four which just won't get married that's crazy now another shocking fact and this one is even more shocking 81 of 81 percent 81 percent of all the women born in the 1990s are still not married really 81 percent 81 percent yeah i guess that's not that bad to, to be fair i was born in the 90s early 90s and i'm not married so i guess i can understand it yeah but this is for women zach now women historically like to get married more than guys wouldn't you say that that's I, a generalization I, I would i'm not a woman so i mm-hmm. gotta be honest that that's mm-hmm. one of those things that eludes me regarding feminine females because i don't know why that is well we're going to talk to two gorgeous women who are going to get remarried one for sure she's already uh, got the ring on it she's got a ring on it as oh, beyonce gosh. would say and uh, the other one who's nearing marriage. So she's she's inching a little closer all the time. So we're going to talk to both of these ladies and uh, find out some things that you listeners and you viewers might want to know. All right. Well, I'm curious to see what they have to say. Well, let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. <laughs> <laughs> Love and marriage. Can we Love. serenade what her? Was that Frank Sinatra? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I'm excited for this episode, Donna, because we were kind of talking uh, off script here about the purpose of marriage. I recently got engaged and realized that possibly me my fiance and I don't exactly have the same views on marriage we both want to get married but for different reasons well let me tell you a little bit about Sarah Crilly, who's on my left and for those of you who's watched <laughs> in the past Sarah is our dating coordinator now if I were her uh, fiance I would be a little worried about I would be moving that date up a little quicker no. uh, because she has access to all these hot bachelors and we're going to be talking so to options. a hot bachelor here in a little bit and Sarah is the dating coordinator you know I don't think he's concerned because he's confident that's very important in a guy it is very important and yes. it's very important for women too and we're going to talk about that in a little bit and then our other millennial and I hope we can get her on our camera I bet we um, can. is Samantha Knight and Samantha Samantha is a kind of the late end of, of the millennial, right? Samantha, you're right yeah, on the yeah. peak. I'm one of the first millennials born in uh, 1982, graduated high school in the year 2000. So that and makes me officially a millennial. A not, not married, not married. No, but divorced. But okay, but considering possibly remarrying, it's you're not yes. close to that to that situation. I, I was until recently. You were until recently. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then, of course, I'm going to question our yes. our resident millennial. Yeah. Uh, you know, Zach, <laughs> I think, is, uh, you know, he's getting a little more serious as time goes sure, along. Sure, sure I uh-huh, am. Yeah, I'm uh-huh. getting older and yeah. realizing my youth is escaping me. Yes, yeah. I am. Well, let's talk about escaped youth. Um, Sarah, we'll start with you. Um, I, as I understand, you've been divorced. Yes, and I have. And now you are, let's let's show the ring on it. Here is a beautiful ring on it. Can we get that ring? Bling, bling. There it is. She's got I'm the engaged. bling on today. I'm one. loving it. I'm mm. loving it. Uh, tell us why you're considering remarrying. Because I found my forever soulmate. And I'm so excited. But Aww. I recently found out because, you know, I use any circumstance of other couples to kind of just bring up, oh, honey, you know, let's talk about this. Like, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think about that? Use some kind of an excuse to bring things up that, you know, I'm genuinely interested in. And so uh, there was some kind of documentary on there, and it was someone that was not going to get married because they were rich and famous. And uh-huh. why would they ever get married? And I just kind of laughed, and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. Well, if I was rich and famous, I would still get married. And he's like, ah, well, you know. Huh? Okay. And I'm huh? like, oh. Is that a hint? So if you were rich and famous, would we not be engaged? And he's like, well, the purpose of marriage isn't. To, it's only for children, only now, to have children. And I'm like, wait a second. Whoa. Wait, whoa Am whoa, I hey. a baby maker? What is this? Yeah. You know, I obviously we want to have children. That mm-hmm. is on mm-hmm. the table. But mm-hmm. that's not my sole purpose of getting married is to have more children. It's because I want to have that promise and commitment to fall back on, you know. Just in case of rush sure, times or right, whatever. Exactly. Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. you go through so much as a couple and mm-hmm. to be married, you have that commitment sure. to, to fall back on. So it did kind of spark this like, well, wait a second here. Well, what if we don't have children? Do you still want to get married? So I wanted to hear your thoughts on do couples need to be on the same page to get married? We both want to get married for just different reasons, it seems like. <laughs> well, <All right. laughs> so, well, in in my Ooh. view, and I'd be interested in Zach weighing in on this, I don't think you you have to be on the same page as both as long as both of you understand the page you're on. 
Okay. So he needs to be very clear as to whether you want to have children or not. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't want to have children, and his main reason for getting married is to have children, that's not going to be a good situation in the in the future. So make sure you have that worked out. And then um, you want this commitment, this public commitment. And so is he willing to do that freely or is he going to resent that? So that's some things you need to sit down and talk about. Whether you go to a marriage counselor, and I always suggest going to a marriage counselor. We were talking earlier before we started taping that sometimes marriage counselors are the best way to get divorced. Because really? they can kind of help you to determine if you're going to stay together or not. And uh, in the same vein, they also are great to help you to find out if you've got enough in common to marry or not. So I'd have that worked out in advance. Hmm. So can you share with us, because you were remarried, mm -hmm. were you on the As same a later page dater. with with your to-be husband on reasons to get married. Did you have that conversation through a marriage counseling or did it just come up or? Well, we no, we, we didn't go to a marriage counselor. Uh, we did after we got married. <laughs> but, but before we got married, we did not. But we did have the conversation quite a bit. Actually, I think he wanted to get married more than I did. Um, he just didn't know if he wanted to marry me. <laughs> he, but he for certain wanted to get married because he'd been married since he was like 24 years old and so you know he had not been single at all I had been single several years so I learned to live by myself I was traveling all over the place so I wasn't quite as anxious to get married I was anxious to have one person because I don't like dating for me was really traumatic and that's one reason I wrote the two books that I wrote Sex and the Siren and Cinderella Has Cellulite especially about later dating because it was so traumatic but I have learned since then, and since I've been on these podcasts, that dating for younger people is just as traumatic as it is for us older people. So we're going to talk about some trauma and dating later on because we have a wonderful podcast coming up called Single is Sexy. Yes. And we're going to talk about that as well. But answering your question, uh, so why did I remarry? Well, let me say, first of all, why I married. Um, and, you know, I thought a lot about this getting ready for this podcast. One of the things we don't hear about anymore that we heard about 30 and 40 years ago is we married for economic stability. In those years, in the early 70s and early 80s, all the way up to the early 80s, women um, were made a lot less money than men. We had a lot of less opportunity than men. Uh, we had three or four career choices, you know, not nearly the career choices women have now. And so a lot of getting married in those days was to have economic stability and to have a home. So that was one of the reasons, you know, we always in college, when I was in college, talked about, you know, is he a doctor? Is he a lawyer? Is he whatever? That doesn't count anymore. You know, that's not a question I think that comes up as much with millennial women. Do you agree? Well, so stability and children were the two that we kind of came back on when mm -hmm. he had said, well, you know, marriage is for stability for the woman and for children. And that got right back uh, up on, well, geez. That what, feels really anti-feminist, though. Little, yeah. Yeah. Like, a little bit. Talk about that. It definitely caused a fight. And it's I'm happy like to share you with have. that. <laughs> <laughs> you have a great career. <laughs> and you don't need no man. And so what is he talking about? Thanks, like stability. Girl, uh, exactly. What is he talking about? So. So, Samantha, would you Let's understand bring him in here. Why, at my, oh gosh. why at my age I'd be talking about stability, but women now in the workforce actually make as much money, most of them, or more than well, some there, of their Well, there's still the wage friends. gap, but yeah, there's there's definitely more and more households where women are the breadwinners. Right. And so does and that have a place in determining to get married nowadays or not? I don't think it does. No? I, at least not for me. So why would you march down that road to remarrying then? You know, so I, I was really against it. When I got married, I was 20. I got divorced at 23. Okay. Um, I carried, I ended up taking on a lot of my ex-husband's credit card debt. Okay. And the paperwork was ridiculous. Um, yeah, dividing Changing all the friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I didn't do that. But Changing um, your driver's license, yeah. Zach. You don't have to worry ridiculous. about that. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. And I was not. like, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to put myself in a situation where I have to separate my bank accounts. And, mm -hmm. you know, I end up taking on somebody's debt. And who's going to live where? And now we have to break leases or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Car and payments then, and such. You know, I, I'm 35 now. And so it's been a good while. It's, what, 12 years or so? Okay. And, uh... You know, I dated a lot. I went through phases where I didn't date for At all. a couple mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I went, you know, a couple years without dating even casually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, w when I met Drew, my boyfriend, he was the one for me. Oh, so you knew. He pretty quickly on yeah uh -huh. I, I fell for him pretty hard but at the same time you know we, we talked about it and neither one of us want kids and mm -hmm. we're just like you know maybe marriage isn't something we'll, we'll 
Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell it for a while. Yeah, so you've talked about this off and on. Well, when we first started dating, I wanted to mm-hmm. make it clear, hey, marriage is not an end goal for me. Mm-hmm. Don't feel like I'm going to put any pressure on you. Mm-hmm. Nothing I want. You know, mm-hmm. I had a bad thing, and, and I'm not looking for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've been together almost three years now. Okay. And and we moved in together in, in March, so it's been a few months. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Was that an adjustment? After living alone for 12 oh years? Oh, my God. It was a huge adjustment. <laughs> Especially for the cats. Huge adjustment. For yes. cats. All, all the cats. It's mm-hmm. been, mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you get used to your own schedule. and mm-hmm. Is, is there know. a magic time that women and men should move in together? Oh, good question. You know what what do you think? Question. It's different for everybody. I see a lot of my younger friends move in together really quickly. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems to be really casual. Neither one of them have a lot of assets. There's not a lot of furniture. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So it's convenient. That it helps them save money. And then when they break up, I mean, they what, just they pack just it up and go to IKEA and buy some new <laughs> new furniture, <laughs> furniture, and move on with life. But um, you know, for me, after having been single for 12 years, I had a household, uh-huh. and Drew has a house, uh-huh. and that's a, a huge thing to think about. You know it we have to get rid of stuff and and if we break up what are we going to do then you know that's a lot of it's it's a huge adjustment i will tell you from a baby boomer standpoint that's one of the most difficult things is merging this years of household you talked about that on your episode yeah yeah very very hard so i can imagine you're you're starting out and now you've we're still working on it Mm -hmm. you know months later Mm -hmm. uh but, you know, one day I, it just kind of dawned on me, I like this guy. I want to marry him. Oh, okay. I do. And, and, but also, <laughs> it really just seems practical to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, we could be common law or whatever, but, you know, if he dies or if something were to happen, he goes to the hospital, what right. happens with the house? What happens with cars? What happens yeah. with everything? Yeah. Like, there is the practical side of marriage. Yeah. That's for sure. That is, Zach... Now, you are the youngest of uh, all of yes, our group. Yes, I am. And uh, talk to us about uh, why these statistics are true, why well, millennials aren't getting married as often, and kind of where, where, what you think. For me. Um, He's adjusting his chair. There mm-hmm. is. Right. He's getting serious. I'm settling in for my epic speech. For you viewers, uh, he's getting really serious. Here, for you listeners, here he goes. Here's what it is. I, I think millennials are very much shaped by the generation that came before us. Uh, ah. Of course, there's, I don't want to say Gen X, Gen Xers, yeah. baby boomers. Um, the divorce rates are crazy high. Uh, they are. And mm-hmm. and a lot of millennials grew up in houses with families who were divorced. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of millennials look at that and think to themselves, you know what? I really don't want that. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to get married, a lot of them don't want to get married, I think, because of that. They're like, you know what? I don't even want to start down that road. I'm just going to be single forever, date around. It'll be fine. Let's not mm-hmm. put a label on anything. Let's not make it official. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're going to get married, you want it to last. Mm-hmm. You want to know it's the right thing. But going into any relationship with uncertainty like that, thinking to yourself, man, maybe if this just isn't the right way to go. Um, in a way, you're kind of doomed to fail. Do you, do you you're kind of destined to, to not be as successful as you would be versus you, just jumping in with both feet. Do you think the 20-somethings are pickier because, because they have more options? We have the dating apps now. I mean, if you, you know, in my day, somebody had to introduce you. You had to run into this person. You had to meet them at church. You had to meet them at school. A lot of people married in college because that's your dating pool was sure. college. I, I think I think there's a there's a charm to the art of the the, the courting that, that took place um, back then. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. writing letters and waiting by the phone mm-hmm. to see if they call, mm-hmm. and, and setting up a date, and then having to wait two days to see if they show up, and mm-hmm. very blind dating. There was there was something to that. The phone rang and you didn't know who it was. Right. There's a reason. Yeah, and hoping your your dad doesn't pick up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh God. And uh, there's a reason now. I think that we as a society have adopted things like Tinder because. Um, we need things like that. We we need a way to make these quick, simple connections because it feels good and it helps us sleep at night. That's what I think. But I think most of those are practices. Like, I, I know a few people who've married the person they met online dating, but most of the people I know, it's like they date, 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 and then they meet somebody in real life. Sure. And that that's what happened to me. Mm-hmm. That's what happened to my good friend Corinne. I mm-hmm. mean, just... You, you meet somebody in real life and you have that better connection than just somebody you swiped right on. I would so, agree. So what do you think, Sarah, is going to happen 
to our 20s and early 30s somethings that are not getting married do you think it's going to continue do you think the marriage rate's going to fall even more gosh i don't know what do you think donna um i think that it may fall a little bit but i think we'll always have some sort of commitment and that will probably be marriage of some sort it's already i mean think about marriages now it could be between two men two women uh it's all races all ethnics all you know it, it's really not defined like it used to be unions are not as defined and i think that's going to continue uh whatever makes us happy is what i think we should do and if you feel like with your significant other you shouldn't get married don't get married don't feel any pressure i think that's one of the problems is a lot of uh, women and maybe men too feel a lot of pressure because your families um, you know your religion whatever so i'm pretty open to um, whatever makes us happy I as long as we don't hurt other people i think part of that pressure is very much social oh my gosh mm-hmm. you go anywhere after you've been in a relationship for a while and so when when's it finally going to happen when's mm-hmm. the wedding you know when you when you're tying a knot on this thing mm-hmm. um that comes up a lot it's yeah. an easy go-to question you know how's your job when are you getting married yeah simple it's like when you're a student in school how's school i mean it's just it's a layup it's it's an easy social thing and when you run into that question more and more and more it starts to loom it starts to it starts to feel like a kind of an overarching thing you can't escape well and we're in the south I mean, Dallas is still very Southern and uh, very traditional. And so, you know, many women look at their wedding day as their one and only top day of their life. Um, And so in the South, you get a lot of pressure. Oh, sure. Um, My son went to Baylor and he gets a lot of pressure for not getting married (laughs) by 30. Weddings feel like such a waste of money to me. Uh Uh-huh. Marriage may not be outdated, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to have a wedding. You're not. If we get married, we will not. We're going to have probably a surprise sneak attack hey come to my barbecue <laughs> surprise we just got married you didn't even see it haha <laughs> so you don't have that secret pinterest board with pages and pages and I pages don't. how about your family how do they feel about that Samantha? oh they've given up on me they've long <laughs> given up on me <laughs> they don't even expect a wedding oh gosh no <laughs> what about you sarah oh i definitely want to have a ceremony with you family do. yes uh, you're yes, such a, a celebration you're my love and do you see it more as a party or more of a a religious kind of celebration i think a mix of both i Mm -hmm. think it's a celebration and i i look forward to doing some counseling with him to talk about you know why he wants to get married beyond children Mm -hmm. we'll have beautiful children together Mm -hmm. but it it means a lot more to me than just having children not Uh, just having children but having children yeah absolutely so i I look forward to continuing this journey with him and what about you zach would you want to walk down the aisle i'll tell you what it is i (laughs) i like I like the I, right. I'm gonna start everything with that. I'll tell you what that what it is. Here, here's 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 the truth. From the um, words, I like of the a idea. Millennial. I like the idea of eloping. Um, not because I don't like the idea of a wedding. I love the idea of having a wedding and having all your family there and friends like to celebrate this really cool moment that you have in your life. Mm-hmm. That rocks. Um, but God, it's so flippin' expensive. And that's exactly it. You could take all of that money that you would put into a wedding. You could go travel for a month or buy anywhere. a house. Sure, mm-hmm. or buy a house mm-hmm. and like actually start moving forward on something instead of. Mm-hmm just like incredibly frivolous spending on floral arrangements not that they're not great they are but good lord they're expensive and, <laughs> they are. and yeah it's quite the industry the wedding industry it's a seller's market and and gosh couldn't you just take that money and have like a really cool life experience with right. it outside or, of a party or you could just start your marriage in debt you know you that's know. a way to go yeah yeah it's kind of like getting you've out of college been there so you know how that feels in there college debt is a problem the more i read about uh 20 and 30 something's not marrying one of the problems is college debt donna if you ever want to do a podcast about student loans i'd be so happy to sit down. i would love to do one i would love to do one <laughs> what else guys we're talking about is marriage relevant today is marriage outdated so in your opinion uh, post-divorce also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um why did you revisit the idea of marriage and was there a time where you're like gosh i'm never going to get married again what do you i guess advice to post-divorce of finding love again and then having that commitment for post-divorcees i think that they will know in their heart and in their gut if they want to remarry or not some people just like to have a commitment i think you mentioned it sarah and they just like to know that he's coming home she's coming home i don't have to be out in the dating world i found this person i think i can you know mold my life with and that's important to me other people want the independence um so you know for me i think it's individual i really really do i think we all i mean look you know look at samantha look at you sarah look at you zach you all have different reasons you all have different time frames um so that's what i think what's the secret to marital success oh i think communication 
communication. Once again, like I said, be sure and know how many children you want or if you want children. If he does, what's he expecting? What are you expecting? The more you can talk about it early, it's going to up your success rate so much. Rather than surprises are not good in a wed and a marriage. Surprises don't work well. But also, he will never meet all your needs. You will never meet all of his needs. So you have to have confidence and you have to keep some of your own independence. Uh, I've found the ones where one person wants to not be as independent and the other person wants to be totally independent off, often doesn't make it. So you have to know how much independence each one of you want to have. Are you going to keep your maiden name? Are you going to keep your first married name? That's such uh, a hot button that, topic, too. That's that hard. is a topic. Yeah, especially if you've had children. Do you keep their last name? Or, or do you take his new name? Do you put the two together? Would you expect uh, anyone you marry to take your last name, Zach? Although you have a wonderful last name. Thank you, Lewis. Mm, it's yeah. a great Lewis. last name. Very, very old school. Mm, yes. I would like it. You would like her, and, and maybe they maybe that's just a, a, a male thing. Maybe it's because I've thought about it a lot. I think it might be one of those things, like the uh, this this very um, id idea of of your leaving a legacy, leaving a mark on it's the world, garbage, leaving oh. something behind. What about her legacy? What about right? And her that's lineage? that's why I, that's why I'm stuck on it because on the other hand, I'm just like, what a lame idea. Yeah, and that totally trashes whatever her old name was. So, so that doesn't work. So we have the id and the ego whatever, going here. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so I, I I don't know. It it really is just whatever relationship, however you feel. I don't know where I land on the whole what, thing. I'll figure it out. What if she decides she's not going to take your last name? Is that a deal breaker? You know, for some guys, I'm sure it is, and for other guys, of course, it's not. And it's it truly is one of the Every relationship is different. What it's about for you? However you land on it. She's probably listening out there. Again, Do you would, guys want to have kids? Would like her to take my last name. Not a deal breaker. Okay, and kids? Um, but that is not also, that's also not a pass to, okay, you totally don't have to. No, no, no. We're going to have a conversation about it. <laughs> I, I just won't die on the hill. That's the only thing. Um, or fall on the sword. <laughs> I, yeah, I like, right. I, I, I like the idea of kids. I don't like the idea of too many kids. And I, li- I also like the idea of maybe adopting a kid or two. Uh-huh. Like, I know. Like, why not? Like, that's just one of those things yeah. I always thought like was so cool. Like, but have, you, have maybe one or two. But then there's a whole thing like one kid is your real kid the other kid's the adopted kid they're and of course all they're your real, your real kid but in a way genetically they're not and that's oh, a thing for Sarah. a kid and like that's a whole thing well and even stop children too sure. so i have a son introducing into you know this new right. family dynamic right, right. And so he's going to have new grandparents exactly mm-hmm. all right. of it mm-hmm. and that's a lot for new a kid aunts to take and on. uncles and while it's easy mm-hmm. for us as adults it's a lot for a child so yeah. I, I don't know but yeah that's that's where i'm at in the whole thing so we're having a big millennial discussion here of why millennials millennials are not marrying at all or why they're marrying later um, and so gosh what a great discussion we've got Sarah over here who um, has decided maybe she'll remarry but she's looking like she will oh we're definitely getting, yeah okay. we're definitely getting she married. has a ring. I just need to be respectful that he has different views on yeah. marriage than I do and we'll definitely go to counseling to kind of <laughs> okay Sarah's right. got a plan <laughs> Samantha I think she's moving down that road inching towards it inching uh-huh. towards it inching and then we've got Zach with definite views from a definite from a guy's standpoint yeah. At some point mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. Also, real quick, before, because we've got a couple minutes left, I want to uh, know, where do, you, where do you, Sarah, Sarah and Samantha land on the, the kids and the name thing? Well, uh, let's talk to Sarah. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not sure if we're I'm going to take his name or keep my maiden name. And I can, my I name can totally is hyphenated understand that, with yeah. my son's last name. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's another. We have a long list of what we need to go through with marriage counseling. But it didn't hold us up from getting engaged. And that was the important thing is mm-hmm. that he popped the question completely surprised because I thought we still had so much to work through. But he was confident enough to pop the question. And I said, yes, and we're going to figure this out baby so oh, let's figure yeah. this out baby i love i love that attitude <laughs> samantha what well so I, i've kind of garnered this professional name you know mm-hmm. this is my name and i do and it's, a, it's, a, it's a solid name samantha yeah. knight samantha how good knight. is that right so mm-hmm. i like his last name too it's crown over mm-hmm. i think it would suit me mm-hmm. but i would probably stick with knight just because it's easier and because i'm known by it and you know in my I, work life. I just, it's my professional name. I just read something and did a talk to some professional women uh, this last week about building your own brand. And that's really kind of what you've been doing. Yeah. Actually, both of you. And one of the things it says is try to have an easy last name. Yeah, one syllable. So, if you can there swing you it. Go. Yeah, so Lewis is going to be easy. Lewis is not bad. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. It's got what some you, mileage. What do you feel about um, hyphenating? Yeah. Oh, you know, oh, yes. that face. Sarah, Sarah Crilly's got a little something going on that way, so, so I'm not I sure I want to address it. it but yeah, what you did I'm it. proposing, because yeah. I can propose too, right? No, he proposed first. Sure. Is to take my current name, so mm-hmm. Sarah Crilly Hill, because Hill is my son's last name, mm-hmm. and making that all my middle name. 
and then okay. adding Nielsen at the end. Wow. Sarah Curly Hill Nielsen. Okay, she's gonna have one, to work harder at building her brand. Right, one, I'm so nice. sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one small issue. What's your current middle name? Uh, K. Oh, Sarah you K. hate to lose K. My southern. grandma's name was K. That's a great Sarah one. Sarah K. Now, K one Love, of the things, the one of the things you could do, <laughs> and this is what I did, is I used my my first married name, Donna Arp, all the time among my friends. But then on all my written things and all of my, you know, marriage license and driver's license, then I use his name. So I think whatever works. I like that. I think that. so. Well, that's a woman's problem. Just, yeah. You guys don't have, what, would you take her name? Donna. Would I take would her, see, because that's the flip side, is right. would the guy take her name? And that, that does happen. Um... Maybe and lots of lots of hyphenated things. <laughs> you know what? It, it, like like I said, with the names and the kids, that's mm-hmm. a problem I'm going to leave for Future Zach. He's going to have it all figured out. He I'm will. confident Future, Future Zach. Zach will know what to do. Yeah. We have had a wonderful time. My goodness, there's so many open questions, so many <laughs> views. No wonder the millennials aren't getting married. They can't decide that's on true. all this stuff. <laughs> we need we, to do a follow up. Yeah, yeah, you know, in my day, we just bought a dress and we bought the flowers, and Daddy gave us away, and our brothers walked us down the aisle or whatever. It doesn't happen that way anymore. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole <laughs> giving other people thing. away at weddings. Uh oh. Oh sure. We've opened something, another can of worms now. And what about one last thing? I have to ask this because I have been asked to marry people, and that really excites me. And um, you know, you can easily now get your license to marry people on the internet. So, do you think that traditional pastors should marry you, or would you have a friend marry you, or? How do you feel about that? I think One I, last question. Because I went to a pretty traditional wedding not that long ago, and listening to the rhetoric that comes out of that, like from what the pastor like says, and I know it's very particular based on who's doing it, there were a couple things in there that I was like, you know, that sounds a little outdated regarding yep. a woman's place in the household. Yep. Regard- mm-hmm. Yeah, Samantha knows where I'm going. <laughs> so I might have something updated. A couple mm-hmm. things kind of tweaked and changed. I don't know if I'd have a friend do it, maybe, if they were really into it, or, or a family member. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Sarah, I love the idea of you marrying us, Donna. I would I'm love so it. Glad. <laughs> Nick would, would Nick it. would not have that. Podcast no, he would. He live would. from would the really? altar. Absolutely. Oh, then we'll have to have the wedding party at my house. It'll then. be perfect. It'll be exciting. That's a great idea. Sarah, how about you? Well, I'm Samantha. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Samantha. sorry, yes. Samantha. I'm thinking about Sarah. <laughs> I I would want Sheriff Lupe Valdez to marry me. Okay. Sheriff Lupe Valdez. Okay. Sheriff Lupe Valdez. She she's my girl crush. Okay. Okay. She's my neighbor, and yeah. she's Sheriff of Dallas. Sheriff like, Lupe, if you're out there, you're gonna get some, a request hopefully before long. Oh, <laughs> it might be a while yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Zach, what else do we need to talk about about these millennials? And and by the way, they are getting older and older. The average age right now for twenty somethings, thirty somethings to get married is twenty nine years old for guys and twenty seven for women. And you think that's early, don't you, Samantha? That's pretty young. Twenty uh-huh. twenty how old? Twenty nine for guys is the average age right now and yeah. twenty seven for women. God, that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> Zach has twenty seven. Yes. You you're right on it. You're well, right on, on target, Sarah. Good job. You are on target. Sarah. I'd like to talk about it more, but I think we're just about out of time. Believe we it or not, Donna, I think this is our longest episode we've done so far. Well, and we still we might have to come back to this. This is a hot button issue. Yes, it is, and we want people to call in and, and write in on this one. We would love to Please know do. why millennials are waiting longer. What's your number one reason? And give us any thoughts you have out there, guys, and, yes. and millennials' parents and aunts and uncles. If you'd like to speak to us or send us an email, let us know what you think. Comments. Uh, send send us an email at cinderellahasaylight at gmail dot com. Follow us on Facebook to keep up with the show and um twitter yeah, subscribe twitter on instagram oh yeah ipods wherever you get your ipod itunes so please listen in we want you to listen in and send this on to your friends because we want uh we want to find out in dallas why this is uh the way it is definitely well thanks donna thank you zach and thank you so much samantha thank you for having and you. sarah you guys were awesome <laughs> Destination for premium talk radio.